What's up everybody, Will Borza here of Borza Mastering. It's the analog vlog. It's a vlog, analog. So today we're gonna to be talking about what mastering actually is and why it's necessary to the process. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Will, I'm a mastering engineer. I work with major label artists, independent artists, and I'd love to work with you too if that's something you need. These videos are gonna be all about mastering theory, mastering technology, and mastering techniques. And as always, there is a accompaniment to these videos that is the Facebook group called The Analog Mob. It's where we discuss these videos in depth and it's just really a great place to meet like-minded people and make some friends. So without any further ado, let's get to the video. All right, so so many records these days are being done DIY, do it yourself, in less studios and in more bedrooms, which Honestly, it's kind of cool. It's like the wild, wild west of music all over again. It's like the first time someone turned up a guitar amp a little too loud and made a really cool sound and that started a movement. The bedroom studio movement is a real thing that's really happening and I'm loving it. But here's the thing. One of the biggest complaints I get is people saying that what they recorded in the studio sounds great in the studio, but as soon as they bring it out and put it in their car or they play it on their phone or they bump it up against other music like their music, it just doesn't stand up. It falls apart. The mix isn't there and they're not sure why. Mastering is the solution to that problem. So even if you DIY absolutely everything else, mastering is something you should definitely hire out for just to make sure that those long hours spent in the studio pays off when the album hits the shelf. Mastering is the final step between what happens in the studio and what is actually heard by the consumers. It is the last artistic step and it is the first step of distribution in the record making process. Perhaps the most important role of a mastering engineer is to optimize your audio to sound as best it possibly can on all platforms and all devices. The reason your song is falling apart outside of the studio is because it needs real professional mastering. So let's talk real quick about the life cycle of a regular professional record these days. It starts with conception. That's where you're writing the songs, you're rehearsing the songs, you're practicing and practicing and just please practice, um, figuring out arrangement, figuring out song order, that kind of stuff. And then after conception, it starts pre-production. That's where you're hiring a producer, that's when you're sorting out the arrangements, that's when you're figuring out what different instruments are going to be on the record and figuring out all the parts you need to record, pre getting ready for going into the studio so you're not paying lots of money to figure it out in the studio. So once you have a solid idea of where your record's going to go, that's when the recording process starts. Recording is taking all that hard work, all that practice you did, all the pre-production, and trying to get it on record as best as possible, truest to the source, truest to exactly the way you want it. Once you have a recording that you're happy with, that's when the mixing process starts. You take the recordings and you give them to a mixing engineer who specializes in mixing, and they balance out all the different individual elements. So the vocals go here, and the kick goes there, and the snare goes there, and we're gonna put the drums this way, and we're gonna put the backgrounds over here, and we're gonna put the guitars around here, and we're gonna put the synthesizers down here. That's mixing. And finally, when the mix is ready, that's when you send the song to mastering. Mastering, where you take the two track, the stereo bounce, and you optimize it, bring it up to level, do the frequency balance, dynamic balance, that kind of stuff, and just get it ready for distribution. After mastering is done, it goes to distribution, and distribution is where the world gets to meet your record. Now, one step in all of this that I should add is also the promotion of your record. And it's not the last thing you do, it's really something you should be doing all the way from the beginning. Wait, is my camera going this way? From the beginning to the end, maybe it's this way, whatever. Promotion needs to happen at every part of the process. Hey guys, we're writing songs, it's really cool. Hey, we're practicing in the studio, we're gonna start recording soon. Hey, we just got into the studio, look at this awesome gear, look at this awesome room. Hey, we're going to mix now, we're in the mixing session and we're listening to the new mix. Hey, we just got our song mastered, it sounds great. We're distributing in three, two, one, launch party. Yeah, promotion is absolutely essential, of course, to the record making process. But as you can see, 
mastering really is that last line of defense between what happens in the studio and what the world sees. It's a very, very important process that really should not be skimped out on. It's not something where you can just drag and drop a mastering preset and hope for the best. If you do skimp out on mastering, at best, you don't have an extra set of ears and an unbiased opinion to listen to your work and make sure that everything's okay. But it might turn out fine. At worst, you might be releasing a record that's full of unwanted distortion, pops, clicks, glitches, not up to level, not up to commercial expectations. It's just, it could be very bad. So proceed with caution. We mastering engineers, we are outside perspective. We're fresh ears that haven't been listening to the same song for the last couple days, weeks, months, years, however long it's taken for you to make the record. We know basically upon first listen what a song needs to get up to that commercial expectation for the song. We know if it's going to be a little too bassy or if it needs a little more. We need we know if it's too shrill or it's too tinny. We know if it's too loud or not loud enough. We do this all the time, all day long. It is our specialty. It's the only thing we do. And we know how to do it very, very well. So that's it, really. Uh, mastering is the last artistic step in making a record. It's your last line of defense between what happened in the studio and what the public's going to hear. Mastering makes sure that your song is at its fullest potential when it gets released. And it's really not something you want to DIY mostly because of the fresh perspective and the trained ears that the mastering engineer brings to the table. So, if you are in need of custom, musical, professional mastering, hit me up. BorzaMastering.com, link in the description, wherever that is. I also welcome you to join the Analog Mob on Facebook. It is a great place to make friends meet new like-minded people, and we're going to be discussing this video in depth. If you like this video, please hit the like button, um, share it with someone that you think could benefit from it. And until next time, peace.